Okay, here's our video today on Earth's systems or spheres, right? So they're called the systems or spheres, depending on what textbook you have or whoever's teaching you, right? They're just areas. And by the way, this is just part one of the video. We'll talk in general all the systems. And then in other videos, we'll explain each system by itself. All right, so all these areas are environmental areas. All these sections of the Earth that we're going to talk about, all these systems, are environmental. Some we live in, some we don't live in, but there are some that we enter. And then there are some we do not enter. And there are some where only a few have entered, so we'll go over all that. But all these systems is called the geosphere. And geo means Earth. So let's look at that. Now there's a lot of conflict here between the geosphere. Some people think the geosphere is just the land area of the Earth. And then there are others who say, well, it's including all the spheres. So if we have the Earth here, we'll just make a round ball, right? And the Earth is not exactly a sphere because it has some bulges at the equator. But if we have the Earth and we have our crust, right? The top is the crust. And then we have the mantle. Right, we have our mantle here, which is the largest part of it, and then we have our outer core and our inner core, right? So a lot of people think that the geosphere is just this. But in this video, we're going to go with most people, what most scientists consider the geosphere, and that's all the spheres. That's all the systems we're talking about. Now, another conflict is there could be four, there could be five, there could be six. So let's look at all of them. And by the way, there are sub-systems. There are systems within each one of them, right? So the lithosphere is, the first one we'll talk about, the lithosphere, that is the land area. That is the, the land part of the Earth. It includes, and let's look at a picture over here so you can see it. Move that over there. So it includes, here's the lithosphere. It is the crust, the continental crust. Right? And it's also a little bit part of the mantle. That is the lithosphere. That part of the Earth. The land part, rocks and minerals, is the lithosphere. And you can see on the bottom there is the asthenosphere, which we'll talk about in a minute. And that's the mantle and the core. So the lithosphere, or the lithosphere, however you, however you want to pronounce it, right? So we have the crust, right? The crust and little parts of the upper mantle. So it is, again, the solid part of the Earth, the minerals and the rocks that make up the Earth. Well, let's just look at this crust for a minute. Well, if we, uh, let's enlarge it. So from here to, let's say, the end of the mantle, right there, a little frozen video there. This is, this is 18 miles, 18 miles, right? So that's an incredible amount of depth, right? But it is, it is the smallest part of the entire Earth, right? Because the mantle is the largest part. The mantle itself, it's the entire mantle to the core, could be 1,800 miles. So the crust is the smallest part, but 18 miles is a lot, considering that we only went down 7 miles. That's the record, actually, a little more. So... The record for digging in the earth, right? If we can dig, here's the crust. If we can dig down, the Russians actually they, uh, were able to dig 7.6 miles. 7.6 miles, that's the record. And they had to stop because the temperatures were incredible. As, it, as you keep digging, it got hotter and hotter. So they reached temperatures that were at least 365 degrees or hotter. And as you keep going down, it gets hotter and hotter. So as we, as the Russian scientists, as they dug down, this is called the Kola Peninsula Deep Hole. It's a deep hole. It's a bad picture, though. And they dug down. And they had to stop because of the extreme temperatures. They started in around 1970. It took 24 years to go down 7.6 miles. So we'll put it up here. 24 years to go down 7.6 miles. Kola Peninsula Deep Hole. So you can see our limitations on the Earth. Let's get a picture 
of the entire Earth, right? So we have the crust, which it looks thin, right? It looks very thin, but we have only gone down 7.6 miles. So let's say roughly we went down 8 miles. We have another 10 miles to go before we can get to the mantle, and we haven't been able to do that. We don't have the technology right now to get to the mantle. So imagine we can go to the moon. We have sent space uh, ships to Pluto, the uh, one of the used to be a planet, and we have Voyager 1 and 2 that are out of our solar system, and yet we cannot get to our core. And the questions we always get is, what happens if we could, if we can dig from here all the way to the end, which we can't, we do not have the technology to do that, but if we could, here you are, you would fall, and at one point you would reverse your fall, and then you would be actually going up. Right? Because remember, if you dig a hole, and if you're here, here you are, there's also someone else over there. So they're falling, and you're falling. You're falling this way, they're falling that way. At one point, this person who's falling would actually not be falling. But again, that's hypothetical, because we can't do that. Again, as we go down, as we keep going down, we're gonna, the temperature's going to get hotter and hotter. And the core itself, the core itself can get to 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit which we talked about in other videos. That's extremely hot. So as we're entering from the crust and the upper part of the mantle is the, lith the lithosphere, right? Or the lithosphere. Some people say lithosphere. We're going to be entering in the asthenosphere. So let's get down the asthenosphere. So the asthenosphere is the mantle. So here it is. It's the giant mantle and the core. And as you can see, we'll bring back that picture, there is an inner core and an outer core. There's also an upper and lower mantle. But the mantle is the largest part of the Earth. So from the picture, this part, right, is 1,800 miles. So the asthenosphere. All right, so let's go back to what we said, four, five, or six, because most textbooks have four which they say the geosphere is the lithosphere, and I can't see it, let's bring it down, there we go, the asthenosphere, which we just talked about. So that's number two. But again, some people link one and two together as the geosphere. Then there's the hydrosphere, which we'll talk about, and in the hydrosphere, there's also the cryosphere. So that's why some people list the cryosphere separate, so that's where we get the six from. And again, within each of these spheres, there are other subspheres, spheres, not subspheres, but subspheres, right? So in the atmosphere, for example, we have the ionosphere, the stratosphere, and so forth, which we'll talk about. So the next one we'll talk about is the hydrosphere. And hydro means water, so what do you think the hydrosphere? It's the oceans, right? The oceans and the lakes, all the water is the hydrosphere. That's an easy one, right? And from the hydrosphere... We do have, as I mentioned, uh, what they say, the cryosphere. So let's put this, the cryosphere. And the cryosphere is the ice. All the ice from the poles is the cryosphere. So remember, with all the oceans, 96%, over 96% of all the water on Earth is salt. We can't drink it. So less than 4% is fresh water. And most of our fresh water comes from the cryosphere. So again, these are the Arctic and the Antarctic poles. All the ice and the icebergs is the cryosphere. Most famous one that we all know is the atmosphere, right? And there are many layers of the atmosphere. So let's talk about those layers of the atmosphere. All right, so the atmosphere, right? Another part of the um, geosphere. And again, as I said before, it has different subspheres. And the one that we are associated with, that we live in, we live in the troposphere, right down here, the troposphere. Now, the troposphere goes about nine miles up into the sky. So from the ground all the way up, it's about nine miles. Let's write that down, nine miles. Again, depending where you are on the surface. And then we get into the stratosphere. And that's where commercial planes are, right? 
and you if you take in a plane you know you're above the clouds and the stratosphere is above the clouds now the stratosphere can go anywhere from nine miles and it can go all the way up to about 31 miles and so forth so then we have the mesosphere the thermosphere and the exosphere and we're going to talk about this when we do a video just on the atmosphere but the last one, the exosphere, that can go up about 6,200 miles. 6,200 miles. One thing you should know about these divisions is that as you go up, there's less and less oxygen and the air gets thinner. No commercial planes can actually fly above the stratosphere. In fact, they can't fly too high up in the stratosphere, planes or jets. They would just, they need oxygen for their for their engines that's why we need rockets that's why rockets are used to get into outer space but we'll talk about that in another video now the last one we're going to talk about is the biosphere and that's us right it's also called the echosphere so you might hear too echo just fix that o and that's all living animals all living well not just animals all living things plants and animals and it's their relationship with all the other spheres so it's the relationship within the geosphere. Remember, the geosphere is all of them. So the biosphere is the relationship of all living beings, us, plants, microbes. And remember, we have microbes on us. We have bacteria on us. In fact, all living things have bacteria. We have millions of bacteria that are all over us, right? They're on our skin, their nose, our mouth, and they're in our gut. And they are good for us. Most of them are. In fact, the majority are good for us. You may hear of uh, commercials or people saying to eat good foods to help the gut, right? And again, we'll talk more about the biosphere in other videos. So again, we have the geosphere. It makes up all the sections, all the environmental areas. Remember, they're environmental areas of the Earth. 